Welcome Average Apple users. Today I'm going to do a remake of one of my uh, most popular videos which is actually installing Windows on a iOS device using UTM. This is coming at a request of people to make an updated video and it, there's been a lot of improvement, improvements with the UTM app. So before we begin there are two main things you're going to need. You're going to need the UTM version 1.0 and if you do not have that or do not know how to install it please click the link above to my video on how to install UTM. You're also going to need an ISO image file of whatever operating system you plan on installing on your iPad. I'm going to be installing Windows 7 because that is the only version of Windows that I have. I know there's been requests for me to do a video on installing Windows 10. The process is the same. I just don't have a legal copy of Windows 10 and therefore cannot install it like that. So I will be installing Windows 7. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the iPad. All right, now that we're on our iPad, I am using an external mouse so that you can see where I'm pointing. I do already have UTM installed. Like I said, if you do not have it installed, please refer to the video in the description as well that will show you how to install UTM. Before we even begin installing Windows, I want you to go into your settings. And I want you to go down to your UTM app in your settings. And we're going to change a few settings here. Alright, so the first setting we're going to use is continue running VM in background. This should help with people that uh, exit the U, uh, go to the home screen when they're using UTM. It should allow the virtual machine to still run in the background. The other option I suggest we change is uh, from the two finger pan. Instead of disabled, where it, uh, that like it normally comes, I would put it down to mouse wheel. Once we have Windows installed, you'll be able to use your two fingers to scroll up and down like a scroll wheel on a mouse. The other option I suggest you change is touch input and switch it instead of the drag cursor that it normally is. Switch it to either touch mode, always show cursor, or touch mode, try hiding cursor. It doesn't seem to actually hide the cursor, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at touch mode, always show cursor. Then we can go ahead and get out of uh, the settings, and we're going to go ahead and launch UTM. Alright, uh, now these are going to be my recommended settings. Everybody can play around with the settings and get the most optimal performance that they can get from their, their own personal choices. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on the plus sign. It automatically gives it a name virtual machine one. I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to change the name to Windows 7. Um, also, during this video, I will be cutting out the, the scenes of uh, Windows loading files and uh, stuff like that to make this video not as long. Just to give you a heads up on that one. Alright, so once we, we give the name, uh, give it a name, which is, let's go ahead with the memory. I have actually tried with a 2 gigabyte memory and the app just keeps crashing. Um, I used to use the uh, one gigabyte memory, which is 1024 for one gigabyte. It works, but it seemed extremely slow. So I actually increased to one and a half gigabyte, which is 1536. I have not had it crash on me yet, and it seems to perform a little faster. It is still slow, but it does perform a little faster. So once you have the, the, the one of uh, your memory, we're going to go ahead and select, uh, set up your drives. You're going to get this warning here that says the total memory usage is close to your device limit. iOS will kill the VM if you consume too much memory. Just hit OK. Um, like I said, I have not crashed on 1536. 
If you do, you just have to go in and lower the memory on the system. So, I'm going to go ahead and click plus for the drive image. I'm going to hit select on the path. And we're going to hit plus. We're going to go ahead and hit import. It's going to bring you to your files. So, I'm going to back out here to on my iPad. That's where I have my Windows 7 iOS, ISO file installed. So I'm going to select that file. Now I'm also going to hit plus again. And I'm going to hit create. Because we need to create a hard drive. So I'm going to just name it the hda.img. And I'm going to give it a 50 gigabyte hard drive. Leave expanding as on. And hit save. Now we're going to hit the back button. We're going to hit the back button, and as of right now, nothing is showing up. Go ahead and hit the plus button. Select your path. Choose your uh, either one. We're going to do start with the HDI, HDA.IMG. Leave the image type as disk, and hit back. It now shows up. Hit the plus sign again. Hit select the path. Choose your Im ISO image file. On this one, you want to click it, uh, click image type and change it to CD, CD slash DVD image. Hit back. Then hit create VM. And we're going to scroll down a little bit. We're going to hit open configuration after creation. And then we'll hit save. Now we're in the configuration files. This is also, I'm going to show you real quick, if you put in too much memory after uh, trying to run it, you could go into your configuration files, hit system, and you can adjust your memory. But what we're go uh, going to look for is down here to where it says sound. I'm going to click sound. It's by default AC97, which is supposed to work, but I've always had an issue with it. So what I do is I go to sound card, and I go down to the next one, Intel HD Audio. Then I'm just going to go ahead and hit configuration to go back. And then I'm going to hit done. It has now created the virtual machine. So now we're going to go ahead and actually run the machine. Now, I usually leave it in this minimized state until I get, get the first blue screen of Windows. And then I will put it in the full screen mode. Okay, once you're in this, you know, once you have this blue background here, you could go ahead to these two arrows and put it in full screen mode. Alright, so... By uh, switch, but uh, by switching the uh, settings that we did in the UTM to touch screen, my mouse is acting as my finger. So if I touch, it would be like me using my finger on the screen, touching the screen. The mouse instantly goes to that point for the click, instead of having to drag the mouse uh, to drag. Instead of having to drag it, so we're gonna go just hit next, and we're gonna hit install now. Okay, that took a little while to load, but like I said, I will be cutting out the loading screen so that it doesn't take up an hour of video. So I usually, uh, for my Windows 7, I usually go Windows 7 Home Basic 64-bit architect. I'll hit next. Accept the license terms. And next. Make sure you click here on Custom Advanced. Make sure that your drive your, that you created, which should be close to uh, 50 gigabytes, is selected and hit next. And it's now going to install the uh, Windows operating system. I will be back when this is finished. If this memory error comes up, just hit OK and continue as you were.
Okay, the computer is finished installing the files and it's getting ready to restart. Once it is restarted, I will be back. So during that process, the computer did finish installing some more files and restart one more time. Okay, we are back and we're at the Windows 7 Home Basic. So we're going to go ahead and type in our username. And then we're going to go ahead and hit next. It wants a password. I'm going to just leave the password blank for now. And it wants you to enter, us to enter our product key. Um, while I'll enter my product key, I will be blanking that out. So that, uh, just for security reasons. Alright, then we're going to go ahead and hit next. This also takes a couple of minutes. Alright, we're on the next screen now. So we're going to go ahead. I just hit ask me later for as far as uh, to help protect your computer and approve Windows automatically. We're going to select our time zone. And then we're going to hit next. We're going to just hit home network. And it'll configure your network and apply the settings. So it's finalizing the windows. All right, so Windows is up and running. Um, let me just try and switch a setting here so that you guys can actually hear the sound. I have to set a change a setting on my streaming software that fixed it. So as you can see, Windows is playing sound. I will go into the sound into the control panel I want you to be able to really hear the sound alright so we're gonna go ahead and play the test sound alright so as you can see there is sound we can get out of that you also notice we are connected to the internet, so you now have Windows running on your uh, iOS device. So, if you found this video helpful, please uh, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, and uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, comment uh, down below as well. And I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.